let's go over some of the concealment examples that are in the starter kit four book page 32 skimming over the concealment gains for the rule book it's only probably about a column and a half not very much but note pretty much anything you do will cause you loss of concealment if it's not a salt move in the los of an enemy unit just kind of keep that in mind when in doubt most likely you're probably going to lose it we may cover that another time but now uh, we're just going to go over the examples Example one, the Japanese set up first on board O on or between hex rows X and AA. Their OB consists of eight 447s, three lights, nine minus one, and six concealment counters. The Japanese player places one squad in each of X2, Y4, Y5, Z6, two squads, two LMG, and the 9-1 leader in AA7, and two squads and one LMG in X8. Because they are all set up in concealment terrain, you may add an OB given concealment counter to X2, Y5, Z5, A7. He still has two concealment counters left, but because his other units in Y4 and X8 are not set up in concealment terrain, they may not use them, and so they are lost. You may not place them anywhere else. One concealment per stack. If, after setting up, the American player has no unit with line of sight, to a unit that did not receive an OB given concealment counter, like the ones in Y4 and X8, then that unit can now be concealed. He'll grow a concealment counter. If the Americans were all entering from off board, all of the Japanese units could set up concealed regardless of location, and there would be no need for concealment counters in the Japanese OB. Going on to concealment example number two. Using that previous illustration, the Japanese player has a 237 half squad in Z2, a 447 in AA4, a 347 in AA5. The American player has a 558 squad in Y6 and one in Y5. All units are concealed. It is the American player turn. The 558 in Y5 drops concealment to prep fire at the concealed 237. The attack is halved for area fire because he's concealed. But the two firepower attack results in a normal morale check, which requires the 237 to lose its concealment and take the normal morale check. During the movement phase, the concealed 558 moves to Z5, losing its concealment since it is an open ground and an LOS to a good order Japanese unit. The concealed 447 and AA4 drops its concealment to defensive first fire at the moving 558. The results in no effect, but does place residual firepower. The 558 then attempts to enter AA5, containing the last concealed Japanese unit. The 347 loses concealment due to the attempted entry. The 558 must end its movement in Z5, where it is attacked by the residual firepower counter and may be fired upon having spent two movement factors in Z5, attempting to enter hex AA5. Now assume dense jungle is in effect, which we can designate in Vazel by changing the terrain type, as you see how the jungle has extended to all the hex sides. The two American 558s are broken and therefore not concealed, although not currently DM. It is the Japanese movement phase, because the American units are not good order, the Japanese units can move how they wish without losing concealment. The 237 in Z2 spends four movement factors to move to X4. Because it remains concealed, the 558 in Y5 does not become DM. The 447 in AA4 spends two movement factors to move to Z5. The 347 AA5 spends four movement factors to move to Y7, but a good order American unit in X9 causes the 347 to lose concealment in Y7, making the 558 in Y6 DM because now it is adjacent to a known enemy unit. In the route phase, the DM must route away from the known enemy unit adjacent to it. Because the dense jungle, it cannot see the 237 in X4, because the 447 in Z5 is concealed. 
the 558 can route from Y6 to either Y5 or X5. It routes to X5 and continues routing to W6. The 558 and Y5 cannot route because it is not DM. In the advance phase, the 447 and 237 advance into Y5 with the broken 558, where they will receive a negative 3 ambush die roll modifier. Minus 1 for the good order first line Japanese infantry unit, which is one of its abilities as a nationality distinction, and negative 2 for the concealed unit. Now notice you don't get one negative 2 for two concealed units, it's just if any of the units were concealed, you would get negative 2. So if the 237 were unconcealed and the 447 were concealed, you would still achieve that benefit. The 558 receives a plus 1 ambush die roll modifier for being broken. In the resulting hand-to-hand -hand combat, the broken American cannot attack. The Japanese receive negative 1 dice roll modifier for hand-to-hand -hand and a negative 2 dice roll modifier versus a broken unit. And another negative 1 if they ambushed the Americans, which are highly likely to do. With ambush, therefore, they would kill the 558 in a hand-to-hand -hand at 1-to-1 one -one odds with an original dice roll of 10, the negative 4 dice roll modifier applying, or cause casualty reduction on original 11, which would equal the hand-to-hand -hand close combat number. Regardless of line of sight, the Japanese units would retain concealment if they ambush and eliminate the American unit, regardless of line of sight. Since they are not in LOS of any good order enemy unit, they will retain even if they do not ambush the 558. Thanks for watching, and may your concealment skills improve. Continue to use them, continue to infiltrate, and continue to dominate by using concealment effectively. May your ASL adventures be plentiful. Thank you.